<laughs> you did it! Yay! Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing okay. You going crazy yet? Not really. I mean, I have a lot of work to do. So yeah, that's it's, good. It's, you know, it's, aside yeah. from not being able to leave the house, it's it's yeah, kind of the same. At least you have a nice home office. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a bedroom, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. My pleasure. Um, yeah. So excited. I, I haven't seen you in so long, and I just no. wanted to, to thank you and also just congratulate you on such a massive success. Thank you. Um, and just thank you for making such a brilliant and relevant and important show. It's just, it's incredible. So congratulations on it. Thank you. Yeah. Um. All right, should we, should we, do we got lots of fun questions. Yeah. And these go faster than you would think they do. Let me just move okay. this up a little bit. Um, so can we talk about the casting for the morning show? Yeah. Um, let's just go back to you developing the pilot. Did yeah. you have certain people in mind already as you were writing it? I very rarely do. I, oh, okay. I have, I mean, obviously I had Reese and Jan because they, they preceded me. Um, yeah. But, but I really am not a writer that has, that uses real people as, mm -hmm. as any sort of placeholder for a character. I really just think of it out of, more out of my own DNA. And then that actually is casting becomes really interesting then because I'm looking for it's not like you're looking for something so specific because you're because you're like oh well I was thinking of George Clooney it's like to me it's like a set of um it's like an emotional DNA that you're looking for mm -hmm. and different people kind of illuminated in different ways uh yeah that's really interesting when you hear it out loud from different people yeah it's it's always nice to go in with that perspective because then we have a little more room to play yeah and bring yeah. you know so many different options and things like that yeah. um so how so i know jen was kind of on board first right i think reese was reese was, reese was okay i think but i don't really know okay i don't know the mythology <laughs> right. perfection. like i know it's michael ellenberg had the idea and it was based on a book by brian stelter and yeah I think he went to Reese and they went to Jen, but I don't, okay. I don't, don't, don't hold me to that. Okay, legally. I will, I promise. Um, so then how did that casting process unfold? I'm sure, you know, from our side of things, once you have people like that sign on, our yeah. job gets a lot more fun <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> because so yeah. many people are interested, you know, yeah. um, who was next after that? Um, I Do you believe remember? Uh, I believe it was, it was either Billy Crudup, Crudup, or, uh... Um, God bless that man. <laughs> oh, he's amazing. Uh, what a, he what, is, a, what yeah. a great person, too. Just lovely Just, to work with. Yeah, that's what I've heard. You know, he's been on so many of my lists for so many years, and I don't know why... Uh, maybe it just wasn't the right role, but I mean, wow, did he hold out for the most perfect, Yeah, like, what a gift to everybody just yeah. <laughs> to see him in that role. It's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a pretty good union. Yeah. Um, and then um, Steve Carell yeah. was, uh, and, and Mark uh, DeClasse, those, DeClasse, those all happened pretty close to each other. Okay. So were there any... Was there any time, like, what, what were some fun, unexpected happenings that maybe happened during the casting process? Um, maybe something that someone signed on that you were really excited about that you hadn't thought of? Um, well, I mean, really, you know, because, because I am not, I am a person, I'm a writer and a producer who mm -hmm. really relies a lot on my casting director because I'm not a person who watches everything. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I really need the, I need their creative inspiration. Um, yeah. So for me, it was, it was, uh, I mean, 
I was I was so happy and excited when Steve wanted to do it because he was a, a first choice and um that was amazing and that was yeah. I mean, that was a surprise in that sense because yeah. that doesn't usually happen. Yeah. Um, and and Billy flew out uh from New York to come and uh sit down and, and talk to us about the part and and that was amazing you know yeah. about what he saw and like it meant something to him yeah. um and that yeah. was really a cool thing and we had a great meeting mm -hmm. um goo goo was a surprise uh and such a such a great idea um yeah but that uh, I, I, you know, was sort of a, a, a thing that happened that I wasn't expecting. Um, that was yeah. just a great blessing. Yeah. Um. So, uh, was there were there any auditions? Or, like, what are some auditions that you watched yeah. that really stood out to you? Um, or what, what does yeah. stand out for you from a casting perspective? You know, something that you're like, you know. Not really what I expected, but yeah, like she's awesome, you know. Yeah, I feel like it is a. Um, it's something you can't. It's so random. That's the yeah. thing. Like, I think it's. I always want to tell people is it's not anything you're doing wrong. Yeah. It isn't even anything you're doing right. It's yeah. Like a random, like the stars. Align. Like a chemistry. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, it's yeah. like a date, and it's the right yeah. date. Yeah. Character come alive for you, and it's maybe they have a quality that you didn't see in the character that's interesting. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes yeah. they bring something like they're really right in a lot of ways, but they'll bring yeah. something that is just not right, you know? Right. Like the right. fundamental like, psychology of a character. And that, again, is just, it's like a chemistry thing. Yeah. Um, what would you say, so kind of changing gears a little bit, what would you say is the biggest misconception of being a showrunner? Um, if there are any. Well, I don't know what, I guess, I suppose before I did it, I thought that it involved feeling powerful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which definitely doesn't. It's like, a, it's yeah. Like, you I, got I, all these network people on your back. <laughs> well, it's everything. It's like it's like nonstop problem solving. And I, when I first started, yeah, doing yeah, that, yeah, yeah, all of Carlton, and he was such a good yeah. teacher. Um, but I said, yeah. I literally feels like you are in a video yeah. game, and it's flying at you, and you have to try to like knock it down, um, and and just keep going. Keep yeah, it's a yeah. it's an exhausting job. It really is. I mean, it's not without you know, yeah. venom, but it is, um, you have right. to, you have to really question, you have to at certain points question if it's worth it because you do in many ways give yeah. up your life for a period of time. Yeah. Your life becomes yeah. a fictional world, which can be kind of cool and magical. Um, but it can also really like impinge on your real life. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to ask that my, the next question was, you know, what are, what's really the hardest part of your job? And I guess that sort of part of it, you know, is putting out all these fires that ultimately usually land to you. Yeah. Right. Or buck um, stops, the buck stops with you. Yeah. You know, and I think the hardest thing, at least for me, because I take responsibilities really seriously, mm -hmm. is being, is carrying the burden of the responsibility yeah, all these people that are looking to you to do something of value, and you know, in this case, it was launch a network. Yeah, it, it like started wow. like all you know, make this project work with all these disparate pieces, and I, you know, you never like creativity has a big X factor, and you never one hundred percent know you can do it. You think you you have senses of thinking you can, but. Yeah. The burden of that was huge. Um, yeah. and it, you know, it's a responsibility and it feels, it's both rewarding, but it can be a little crushing at times. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I can't imagine the pressure of, you know, yeah, like you said, leading with, you know, this first sort of um, maiden voyage with Apple (laughs) and all of that. Many a night. What was it like like like, working with them? They're they're great. Um, They they were really, were and are really supportive and um, they understood the scope of what I was going through, taking it on, Good. you know, mm-hmm. um, and they were supportive. Um, but nonetheless, it was just a, it was a big undertaking. Yeah, I bet. And many, many nights I would be just completely stressing out going, how did launching Apple end up on my brain? <laughs> I don't feel like it. I mean, that's the thing is like, I don't, I don't, I don't feel that way. So it's like, it's just like, sometimes the, it just seemed like insane. It seemed insanely funny, you know, yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, huh? Um, but God, well, here you that. are. <laughs> here you are. It was yeah. a great success. Here to, here um, somebody work. asked, someone just asked, was Apple involved in the casting process? Um, yeah, networks are always involved yeah. in casting. I guess, like, how, how heavy were they involved compared to previous experiences? Um, they were, the, it was a very, I, I think it was a, you know, they were very, they were always very respectful to the partners in the projects because there are so many. There are mm-hmm. six partners. So mm-hmm. they always you know, kind of came into the, they let us decide, say here, you know, here's the people that we like, and then they would, they would weigh in. Um, but, but never, uh, blew anything up or, um, just, just really helped facilitate things that we wanted. Yeah. You know, quick question to piggyback off of that. What's it like for you, not necessarily with Apple, but on another show, when the mm-hmm. network has all these ideas of someone they want in this role, and they push it on you, and it's like, not what you were thinking, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, that's kind of the story of being being in Hollywood. I mean, yeah. it, it's been my whole career. Is, yeah. well, and it isn't, it's not like it comes from a bad, it just creative process with people who are not the creator. They're, no matter how you pitch an idea, they're going to have a vision of it in their head that suits their needs, that has yeah. some, very little to do with what your drive is seeing. Right. So, sure. the constant, the constant, you know, it's like, yeah. go, it goes with casting, it goes with story, it goes with tone, it's constant. Yeah. So yeah, the notes that's just don't what, stop. That's you have to get used to, just, um, yeah working with yeah absolutely um so how much um people are asking how much experience matters to you when casting so obviously talking about you know the co-stars the guest stars sometimes even the larger guest star roles um when you're looking through choices that you know casting sends to you um if someone really jumps out at you does their lack of experience ever sway your decision? No, it really doesn't. I mean, I would say sometimes it's better if they have less experience than they've done things that aren't the right show. Yeah. What you're looking for. Um, but I, I took chances on a couple people um, that I think turned out great. Um, yeah. And, um, Olivia, you know, mm-hmm. hadn't done much. Uh, yeah. And that was like a classic example of like, we're looking at this tiny little video yeah. of her and she just had this quality that was perfect for the character. Yeah. Um, I was really excited when, um, when that got sent to me and I saw yeah. her. Yeah. That was a great find. But no, I actually enjoy, um, I think it's always fun to find somebody new. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, you have to start sure. somewhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on 
the morning show, do they do, do you go and do producer sessions with them or do they send you links kind of how we did on Bates? It depends on, you know, what time, like what part of production it is and how much time, you know, mm. I have that I can go. I love doing that because I really love actors and I love, mm -hmm. I love our, our, um, casting director and, mm -hmm. uh, so when I can, I do, but I didn't get to do as much but this season before we shut down. Yeah. Um, but I think in the early stages, it's really important to be in there because, as I said, there's always a lot of different interpretations of character. And I think the yeah. more the creator can be in the room, the, the better. It, it just helps communication better. Absolutely. Do you prefer to be the one giving direction when you're in the room? I don't mind it. I mean, I think sometimes early on when a, when a, when a world is new to people, including directors, I think it's, yeah, it's appropriate. You know, I think that it's like, I'm, I'm hugely collaborative. Um, and I love what directors bring. Mm -hmm. I think, I think creators have a specific vision into something. Yeah. So, uh, is it normally just you and um, Sharon, right? Hey, Sharon. Uh, Vicky? V yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Is it just you guys in the room? No, uh, and Elizabeth, uh, is, uh -huh. who also works with her, who is great. Um, uh -huh. No, and then usually because uh, Mimi Leader will always be there, yeah. who is our wonderful director. And um, yeah. Phil Ellenberg is often there. Uh, and, and is a very active uh, creative producer on this. That's awesome. So yeah. uh, a lot of actors, when they go into a producer session, they are like, it's so intimidating I to them, imagine. you know? I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And you're so warm and kind, but, you know, sometimes producers don't really know, know. how to interact. And it's just kind of a, a scary, um, just not familiar experience. Yeah. So, and a lot of times they ask, you know, should they make small talk and just kind of show right. a little bit of personality? I mean, how do you feel about that? Do you like when an actor comes in? And I mean, you like people to come in and, and I mean, we're a pretty friendly room, so we always try to put people at ease and mm -hmm. Talk a little bit. You don't want people to go on and on because you're always on a schedule. Yeah. <laughs> they think just um, like genuinely connecting if the person mm -hmm. is allowing it. Yeah. You know, which is a horrible right. thing to say that anyone no, would. No, it's true. Some people don't. Some people yeah. want to have a wall. Right. You know, and I, I think you really have to feel it out with each individual um, audition. I don't think there's a hard and fast rule for all of them. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, all you can do is be yourself, be professional, yeah. be prepared, be yourself, and it will happen with the right people for you. Totally. You know, like I pitched when I was starting my career, I would go pitch to shows that were a horrible fit for me, and I wouldn't get a job. <laughs> and it's like, then when you find your people, you fit because you have a similar makeup you know yeah um, and I think that that's true for for acting too and I do find that I have had really I love actors and I always mm -hmm. work with lovely actors mm -hmm. and I'm like well maybe that's not a coincidence <laughs> well because you know? I love them and I'm respectful and I you know I, absolutely I think, uh, I think I think it's a circle you know um I like having, I like being able to communicate with them all the time. Um, you know, and obviously that's a thing you have to understand too. Like when, like if a producer opens a door to you or a creator opens a door to you to participate a little more in the back and forth of the scripts, mm -hmm. don't overwhelm them because <laughs> the door right. will shut. <laughs> oh my God. Saying? Like, you have to, like, it's a great thing, but you also have to remember, like, they're dealing with so many people that are, have this opinion, that opinion, that it, like, it can't become too much. Right. Um, but I think, um, you know, people generally know that and kind of respect and appreciate it. But, like, yeah. 
like some of my best collaborations have been with actors. You right. Know? Yeah. I mean, for, I, think that's for great. Example, I still talk several times a week. Like oh, we sweet. just have like such a great creative, um, like, uh, like brain meld, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like those people are all so lovely and nice. And and the same with this cast, just really, yeah. just really good people, smart. I love, yeah. I love hearing that. I think, you know, casting directors really try to take that into perspective and try to, you know, if we hear anything around town that they've been, you know, kind of nasty to someone or whatever, like, we're not going to put those people forward because why would you want to work with them? Right. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's just so important. I always say sort of my life motto is to work hard and be kind, which I think yeah. is <laughs> you fall in line with that. Um, it's just so important. It is important, and I think, too, it's probably very difficult when you do hear stuff because there's a lot of sometimes games of telephone and how yeah. you hear stuff back from the set, you know, and so then mm -hmm. you kind of have to investigate a little bit, like what really, you know, because that can be very dangerous, too, but I think always trying to kind of give people the benefit of the doubt and, and communication is huge like just talking to people directly about issues, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so it just goes to show, you know, if you're, you know, a jerk to the crafty on set, it can get back to someone, yes. you know? Yes. I <laughs> you mean, know. I, think, I think in general, the shows I've worked on, it's like people want a harmonious set. Because that's, yeah. that's their world. That's their family, right. you know? They right. want... You don't want your relatives to be assholes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Absolutely. Um, so really quick, let's talk about table reads. Yeah. Do you guys do table reads on the show? We do. Yeah. Okay. So. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. You know, a lot of shows don't shoot in L.A. Right. Um, so they're just kind of getting used to not having them. I know they're really yeah. helpful and they're enjoyable. Yeah. But I, I think one thing that I've seen from my perspective is that actors actually get really nervous for these table reads. Yeah. So do writers. And casting directors I too. For table reads. Yeah. I think every, I think every, they're fun, but they're nerve wracking, right? Yeah, they totally are. It's a little mini. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Do you think, I mean, in your opinion, is it kind of a little bit of a test? I th what I think it is good for is it breaks the ice. Yeah. Uh, because I think all creative people are, we're all nervous. Like, we're all yeah. like, we, we want to do it right. We want to get it right. We want to yeah. meld with everybody. And I think, I think that those things happen in stages. And so I think it's a good icebreaker for every episode. I also think it's just really useful. Do I think it's a test? I've never had somebody fired after a table That's good. <laughs> yeah like I think that would be a little harsh um they would have to be really um I can't even imagine what it's happened wow yeah it's I not fun and I and I, it's good to hear your perspective from that um it's not common but sometimes mm -hmm. it's especially it's more common with the executives who are there and that makes sense you know, they'll, yeah, they'll hear yeah. something and, you know, I don't know, is she the, the best person for this? And then they'll go back to the drawing. It's rare, uh -huh. but um, it's yeah. good to hear that I think overall it's more of just an icebreaker. Yeah. And for you guys to hear the material, right? Yeah, totally. It's never a test for the. needs to go or is this scene structured well are these lines working can I cut something out of this is a dragging you know but it's never about like oh I, I didn't like that performance well that's good <laughs> that's good to hear because right, yeah. I know ca casting directors too get get in our, it's kind of like this is our presentation of what we've put together and this is the first time everyone's yeah. hearing it so there's a lot of yeah. pressure you know for us too um yeah but it's it's good to hear you know we're kind of all in it together um definitely yeah um 
So I'm going to get greedy here for a minute and ask some questions that I think would benefit casting directors yeah. uh, okay. too. So I think it'd be interesting. I know we, uh, Jess is watching and, and it might be interesting. Um, but Hi, uh, <laughs> I know she sends her love. Um, when, what, what's your preference? You know, when a casting director sends you a pitch um, of actors that they've read or maybe some ideas from lists, do you like when they interject their opinion or do you kind of just like to have a blank slate and just not really have anyone's opinion to start and then maybe go to them after? It depends on the person, but the mm -hmm. people that I've worked with who I respect so much, I always like to have like, I like when they just, like, you, they give it to you blank. And then if you have questions or you're like, I don't know about this person, if you are overlooking a person that they feel strongly mm -hmm. about and nudge you a little bit, I always found that very helpful. Okay. That's good. So sometimes you need to be nudged to look at something else or to, you know, because you're making a huge judgment off of a, a minute of material, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I I think that's nice, but that also goes to really trusting your your casting directors and having knowing that they have your sensibility and that they get it and yeah. that they know they know what you're looking for sometimes more than you do. Right. That hopefully that's the plan that's, at least. Yeah, well, <laughs> some great, you know, the great ones. Yeah. 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 What, what's it like when, um, how, how do you feel about the writer of an episode and, um, you know, maybe this pertains to only if they've created a character in that episode, but, um, how much of their opinion do you like them to weigh in on if, if it's like their episode or they've created a character or something like that? I mean, that again depends on the writer. And yeah. It on if I feel like a lot of times, I just want to make sure everybody is on the same page with sensibility, with tone, um, yeah. because that's always a tricky thing. I think especially if you write a lot, like something that's kind of tonally different, um, it, it maybe requires a little more um, policing, I guess, of opinions. Mm -hmm. And um, it's trickier on this show because there's so many partners that it's like one more voice is not really super helpful. Yeah. Like in a perfect world, would I have every writer produce every episode that they contributed to? Yes, I would. But it's just yeah. not always a practical reality. Right. Um, I'm going to ask a question from one of our favorite gals. <laughs> Can you okay. see that? Yeah. <laughs> Um, how do you feel about people ad living in the room? It's that's a um slippery slope. I would say mm. if you're in the room with the writer, mm. I would not do it. Yeah. Um yeah. I think if unless they tell you have fun with it. You know, like the you know, are you can ask ahead of time? Are you, you know, okay with ad libs? And sometimes I'll be like, We'll do it once for me as it's written. You know. Right. But right. I don't, I don't like it when people come in and take too many liberties with the material mm. because it's been a lot of time writing it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes um, they stress about being word perfect too. That and I don't I have, care about as much. You don't care about that as much. I have had um, there was a, a writer director of a pilot that he warned me ahead of time. He was like, I have written every single word for a reason, and I uh -huh. want you to make sure the actors know that. And I was like, got it. You know? That and they were like, so extreme, you know? Yeah. For <laughs> like, yeah. that seems a little extreme, but, you know, to each his own. Yeah, to each his own. But, um, you know, it was, it, it was an interesting yeah. perspective. But um, it, is, it is true. Like, you are it's it's a personal thing to the writer so i would yeah. say just be aware if the writer is in the room right right totally especially with adding a button or anything like that oh yeah you know, a lot of actors have to do that yeah um one quick thing that someone hasn't asked but just made me think of you know those the, the one-liner under five roles um actors always ask about those because um 
they, they, they wonder how they can stand out. And usually my response is it's not really about standing out because usually those types of roles are just to deliver information mm -hmm. or serve a specific part of the story or the scene. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it'd be interesting to hear from you, you know, is it much more about for those size of roles, is it really just about how they physically fit in in that scene or in that world? Is that, or, or is there, or, or are you looking for something a little more beauty? No. I think that you're looking for the reality of the scene to play. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, it, I mean, it, it really, a lot of times when I like, I like to look at um, old movies a lot, and sometimes. Mm. You'll see, like, someone who became an iconic star in some sort of one line, walk in, walk out. And the, and the great thing is you never notice who they are. So it's like, yeah. it, really, it isn't like, oh, some people just have this power and they just walk out. It's like, no, it's not. Sometimes, yeah. right, you know, right. your job is to come on, be part of the reality of that scene, um, work with everybody else and do your job and, yeah. you know, that's very much appreciated. Yeah, I that think well, that's very much appreciated. That's what we, yeah, that, that's something that we talk about a lot, but it's, it's good to hear that from you. Yeah. Um, you know, um, what is this? Oh, uh, so I know um, you're definitely not against this because Nestor's on the morning show, but just in general, what are you, what are your thoughts and opinions on reusing actors from different projects that you've worked on? Are you super open to it? Are you, yeah. yeah. I'm super okay. open to it because I feel like you, um, if you have a good relationship with them, I think why not? It's like creative, being creative with someone is a great, um, you know, if you're good at, yeah, at it together, you're like, of course you're gonna want to do it again. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes it's tricky because you can have an idea of that person and head in your head the previous character they played, and you have to be open to the fact that this can be different. You know, it's not gonna be them just doing that same character. Um, so that can be a little a little tricky, but I just feel like those relationships are so valuable and special that yeah, I mean, I want to I want to work with everybody I've worked with again. <laughs> are you there? Did I freeze? Did I freeze? Yeah, and they're and friends. I mean, it's fun to work with your friends. Yeah. You're kind of freezing out. You're good. Okay. I lost you. Yeah, are we good? You can hear. You can hear me. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. No, I can. Okay. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, we're back in business. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, is there a certain level of like unspoken? Uh, maybe encouragement um, from your agency to ever hire actors from that agency, whether it's this or something else. How do you mean? So what do you like mean? Like sometimes with movies, the agencies really try to package everything or just try to encourage the director or sometimes even the showrunner to say, Hey, maybe you should sway towards this guy because you know, we're with you and it helps our agency. Some, sometimes we see that. So I was curious if you had ever come across that. I don't really because I don't deal directly with the agents most yeah. of the time. Yeah. That's good. Well, Great. I, yeah, that, that would, it's just time consuming. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Yeah. Not necessarily productive. Yeah. 
I mean, when you when you when it gets to a specific point where you need to, of course, I would. And um, the you know that's different. Yeah. Um. So the question of the day for everybody right now, and you may not have an answer, you may not know, but it's obviously so many people are wondering how our industry is going to change after all of this. I know. Do you have there's, opinions on that? I feel like there's going to be a lot of development and there's going to be a lot of, I feel like when we are finally able to safely do production again, it's going to be like pilot season on crack. That's what I was thinking. It's yeah. going to be so fast and furious and such a tidal wave of need. I think, you know, we're going to we're going to have to get through this dry spell yeah. and then I think it's going to be uh pretty lush. That's good. Do you yeah. think it's going to take a while to get that momentum? Mm, I think people are going to be so prepared for the word go. You know, I think it's going to happen pretty fast. And I think everyone is going to be aware that everybody will want to go back into production. Everybody has the same needs. Yeah. People are going to be, like, trying to, like, outmaneuver things ahead of time. As soon oh, as I know. sense in the air that we're going to go back. Yeah. Oh, I, tr I feel it. Trust yeah. me. I mean, my production was halted. You know, were you, yeah. were you in the middle of shooting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Um... I know. Just to, so some, some other questions that people had asked were if there were any just memorable, um, whether it's a casting moment or not, just a show runner moment on this show or any show in the past, just mm -hmm. if there were any memorable memories or funny stories or anything that kind of sticks out. Oh, uh, that, that have to do with casting? Sure, if if they come off the top of your head, or it can just be a production thing, like a. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. It's like production. I really can't. Of course, I can't think of any off the top of my head. <laughs> there's hundreds of them every year. Yeah, um, but it's they're also really hard to translate because yeah. they're of such a specific, weird set of circumstances that are <laughs> funny or memorable. In that, but it's like setting that up is very impossible. Yeah, I don't, I don't really have a good answer for that one. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, do you? I mean, I guess just to kind of um, so many questions here to kind of leave everyone. What is kind of your? If you could leave actors who are sort of in that like either just starting out or maybe yeah. in that co-star, mm -hmm. you know, part of their career. Um, just anything that you've maybe learned over the years that you would pass on to them? I guess, I mean, I think it's a really admirable, I think trying to be creative for a living is an admirable pursuit. And I think it's, it's hard. And yeah. I think you have to kind of accept that you're going to do a really hard and competitive thing and kind of know that you can't really control it beyond yeah doing your work, being prepared, caring, you can't really control it beyond that. So don't yeah. like, beat yourself up if like you didn't get something or you feel like, oh, I should have done it this way. Or It, it really has so little to do with that. Yeah. Um, and I think try to find as much joy in the process of doing it as you can. And really, like that has always fed me when my um, – when I, you know, when I was trying to break in, when I, you know, when I was having a harder time in the business than others, like my joy of writing yeah. would pull me back into a place where it made sense for me to keep pursuing it. And I think like, just try to live in the joy of your art um, because that will always feed you. Yeah. Um, and just like be... Just don't beat yourself up. That's my answer. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Mind. It's hard. Like, it's <laughs> trying it's to do true. something really special and hard and um, just, like, go for it and yeah, do the best you can. Yeah. I do have – there's a, there's a few writers in the house who I will – I've been asking some, some writing questions, so I'll just ask really yeah. quick. But, um, you know, a lot of writers are stuck in this position where – 
Um, it's so crazy, you know, from my perspective, acting is a really hard thing to get into. Mm -hmm. um, just from my own perspective, but there's a lot of different things you can do to help yourself, which I'm obviously is always ingrained in my brain. Yeah. Um, but it almost seems harder for writers because there's not a lot of ways to put yourself out there the way there is for actors, where yeah. with, you know? Yeah. I think I'm, that's true. I mean, yeah. you have to, um, you have to get people to read your material, which is not, not an easy, easy thing to do. And I, I think now how people get started is they either know someone who mm. can help them, you know, get people to see their material or, which isn't always like a solve all. I mean, sometimes that doesn't do anything, you know, sometimes people read it and they're like, well, this doesn't really appeal to me. It doesn't mean it won't appeal to someone else. Right. Um, but a lot of people now, I guess, the more common way is to get a foot in the door job at an agency mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. a literary agency or in a, on a production in a writer's office and get to know, it's all about getting to know people. And, you know, I think doing such a good job at your entry level position that people want to help you. Because yeah. work with people who you know are just there to try to kind of get their script in front of you. And I get that and I appreciate it. But it's like, man, if someone comes in and is such a great PA or is such mm -hmm. a great, you know, writer's assistant and you you appreciate the hell out of them because yeah. production's so hard. Like anybody yeah. who is there who is really willing to be um, supportive and happy and, you know, help is happy to be part of the team. That's hugely meaningful. And then you always end up wanting, at least I do, I end up wanting to help those people. Yeah. You know, or to like give them whatever like extra push I can. Yeah. So, How often do you see those types of people move up? Is it like... Uh, I've had a lot of them. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like... Um, I feel like it's important when you hire people for being writers, assistants, or PAs to read them before mm -hmm. so that you know they have something that you want to help them achieve, you know, because I know people aren't, don't necessarily just want to be like getting people's lunches. Like I get that. Um, and it's, it's part of the, it's part of moving up the, the ladder, but I think it's important for employers to, to know who they're hiring and if they could actually um, help them, you know, if like this is a writer, I would maybe hire someday once they learn the ropes a little bit, or they have a good voice for character. They, they have a great, you know, I think that's important. Um, it's like a responsibility. Yeah. And then one quick question, because there, I know there's a lot of writer PAs, you know, out there trying to make that step. How do yeah. you feel about when PAs or assistants speak up in the room? Like, is that, is that sort of a thing where you should just read the room? Is, do you encourage pitches? I think it's read the room because yeah. it really depends on, like, I don't think it's good to do too quickly. Mm -hmm. But I think once you're settled in and I think if you kind of measure it out a little, so it's not like you're suddenly like the loudest voice in the room. <laughs> But um, I'm definitely not one of those people who is like, oh, the writer's assistant should just be invisible. Mm -hmm. I feel like what, that's stupid, you know. But, yeah. And I've had really um, great writer's assistants who, um, I mean, Tori Spear, I still am working with, you know. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's a producer, writer on the show now. Awesome. Um, and then... So I think, you know, it depends on who you are and it depends on who you're working with because yeah. everybody has different attitudes about that. Yeah. Um, and we're almost out of time. So uh, I'll leave you with, with just one last more positive question. And it's okay. just what's like the most enjoyable part of your day to day or the job in general? What do you I love, love about it most? I love living in fantasy worlds. I, lo I love forging forging fantasy worlds. I don't know why. It's a weird thing to want to do. Hey, I think everybody here does too. <laughs> but it is. It's really magical. And I love being able to do it with other people where we're all basically trying to achieve this invisible reality. Uh, it's 
weird. It's a weird thing to do for a living, but I do think it's really special. It's really fun. And, it, and it's just joyful, you know? Yeah. yeah. It brings much needed distraction right now. Yeah, it does. <laughs> what are you watching right now? Um, I'm actually just rewatching Succession. Um, oh, okay. Because I, I really love that show. And uh -huh. uh, I'm not, I, I, I don't watch a ton of stuff. Like, I, when I watch something, I really watch it very carefully and thoughtfully. So that's yeah. kind of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I try to do the same. Yeah. Well, you are amazing. You are Thank true. you so much for this time. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're the best. Um, All right. Well, I'm here you for this. Me. Wishing okay. you the best. Stay you sane. Too. Stay safe. You too. All right. Thank okay. you. Take care. Bye. You too.